Thank you, Dr. Lee. So, um, I'm Sujin Park. I'm a pediatric cardiologist in Sejong Cardiovascular Center. And my topic today is echo in congenital heart disease. So a couple of days ago, I showed my slides to um, Dr. Lee over there, and I had about 100 pages. And he told me to cut it down to 20. And I compromised, and I have about 40. Uh, so um, I'll try to get it in time. So um, because I had to trim down on um, my slides, the goals of the talk, I had to adjust a little bit. So I'll show you the basic Im uh, image views, and I'll uh, demonstrate the commonly seen cardiac lesions and uh, post-cath and OP findings. And number three, um, I had to give up. So, uh, so why is echo important? Uh, it is important because it's the primary imaging modality in cardiology. It is very practical and um, mostly portable and easily accessible, and it is used to make and confirm the diagnosis of the heart disease, and it helps guide decision regarding intervention and surgical repairs, and it also helps to um, evaluate the residual lesions defects following the repair. However, it is operator dependent, and for accurate analysis, the operator should have an excellent understanding of the normal and abnormal cardiac anatomy and physiology, and they have to follow a thorough systemic approach. So these are the places that I, I get called in to do the echo, the clinic, ward, and ICU, and the cath lab, and the op um, operation room. So usually TTE and um, TEE, uh, sometimes intracardiac echo, and um, rarely epicardial echo. So I'll start with the transthoracic echo. There are um, five imaging locations, but you're not limited to this, so you can be creative. You can use the pulse uh, wave Doppler. It measures the velocity at the specific point of interrogation. And the continuous wave Doppler, it uh, sums up the blood flow velocity along the line of interrogation. The color Doppler, if I convention red is toward the probe and blue is away from the transducer. And the color appears, if the color appears speckled or aliasing, there is a velocity, um, the velocity of the blood flow exceeds the scale of the color map. So you start with a parasternal long axis view. And here you can, uh, this view is useful for evaluating complex arrangement in congenital heart disease. So this is the typical long axis view. You can see the aortic valve and the mitral valve, and you can evaluate, um, evaluate the uh, squeeze of the left ventricle. Uh, there's a red flow coming across from the LV to the RV, so this is a VSD. And after the operation, you can see the patch here. This is a um, modified long axis view showing the uh, parallel circulation of the uh, transposition of great arteries. Uh, you can find the overriding of aorta in a tetralogy patient here, and posterior malaligned um, aorta, uh, a VSD. This is usually um, associated with obstruction of the LV outflow tract, so you have to check the aortic arch. You can see the color aliasing at the aortic valve level, uh, showing aortic stenosis, and the blue uh, regurg uh, away from the uh, aortic valve, uh, aortic regurgitation. And this is a tricuspid inflow view. You can um, evaluate the tricuspid valve and the RV uh, function here. This is an Epstein's anomaly patient with a um, apical displacement of the posterior uh, leaflet. And this is a TR jet in an ASD device patient. This is the RV outflow track view. You can measure the pulmonary valve annulus here. In a uh, pulmonary stenosis patient, you can see the doming of the valve and color aliasing at the valve level. And then if you turn the probe uh, 90 degree, uh, degrees counterclockwise from the long axis view, you can get the parasternal sh short axis view. This is where you, um, if in a normal round LV, you can get a shortening fraction here. And you can uh, evaluate all the valves here, aortic valve, pulmonary valve, and the mitral valve. Uh, this is the aortic valve. 
pulmonary valve, RV outflow tract, and tricuspid valve, and the atrial septal, uh, septum. The 10 o'clock uh, red um, flow here, uh, you can uh, diagnose perimembranous VSG, and if it's a two o'clock uh, flow, you can uh, diagnose subarterial. And pulmonary atresia, you don't see a um, connection between the RV and the pulmonary uh, outflow. And the pulmonary arteries are supplied by the PDAs coming up. Uh, you can see the bicuspid aortic valve and hints of coronary arteries here. And this is a big coronary fistula arising from the right coronary cusp. And in Kawasaki disease, you would um, evaluate the coronary arteries. And this patient uh, shows uh, coronary uh, dilatation in both left and right coronary arteries. And I took the patient to the cath lab, and the echo correlated uh, well with the angiogram. This is the mitral valve view. You can uh, evaluate the mitral valve here. Uh, severe mitral regurgitation, thinning of the ventricle wall, and poor uh, ventricle function. You see two um, orifices here, double orifice of mitral valve. And um, if you sweep apically, you can see the papillary muscles here, two papillary muscles. Um, you can see the VSD, muscular VSD right here. And in a hypoplast patient or a parachute mitral valve, sometimes you can see a single papillary muscle in this view. If you go to the four chamber view, you can um, evaluate all the chambers here and get um, the LV outflow track you can evaluate the LV outflow track here. And this four chamber view is important because this is where you get all the functional uh, data, TAPC, uh, FAC, and strain, and tissue Doppler, et cetera. You can get it here. And in a four chamber view, this is the right, left, and you see the apical displacement of the the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. In a, in a complete AVSD, uh, absence of the crook, so large, uh, large um, uh, VSD and premium ASD and a common AV valve. See um, hypoplastic left ventricle with severe mitral stenosis and a hypoplastic left heart syndrome. This is the five chamber view. Uh, you can uh, do the Doppler here because the flow is uh, parallel to the beam. And um, in a VSD patient, if you're planning a device closure, this is a good place to measure uh, the defect size. And the aortic regurgitation and stenosis, you can measure the Dopplers here. And the short, uh, subcostal short axis view is um, very useful in neonates and infants and uh, people with uh, poor lung functions. It's uh, useful for small kids, but um, for adults and heavier people, you can't really see. Uh, so in uh, atrial septal defect, you see, um, you see the septum here and ASD defects here, uh, SVC, IVC flow. If you turn the um, probe 90 degrees counterclockwise, you can get the short axis view. In a neonate, you can get the whole arch view here. This is a narrowing um, at the isthmic ith level in a coartation. And um, the enfos view of the AV valve in an AVSD patient. A suprasternal notch view, you can get the arch view and parts of the uh, pulmonary artery branching, uh, coarctation of aorta, and LPA stenosis. You can diagnose in this view. And the suprasternal uh, short axis view, you can see the innominate vein emerging into the SVC. If you don't see this, uh, you can uh, suspect an LSVC, usually draining into the coronary sinus. This is the crab view where um, you can see the pulmonary vein draining into the LA, and this patient had a um, stenosis in the right upper and mid uh, pulmonary veins. So um, TE can be used to uh, follow up patients who had undergone interventions, and um, 
This is a very well-placed PDA device. No residual shunt between the uh, aorta and the LPA. Slight protrusion, but the Doppler sh shows no significant uh, obstruction. However, in this patient, you can see that the device is uh, intruding into the aorta, causing a uh, significant obstruction. So this patient was taken into the um, OR. In an AS device patient, you can see that um, there's no residual AS shunt, no venous obstructions. And here, uh, the, val uh, the device is not touching the mitral valve. However, in this patient, you can see that the LA disc is impinging into the mitral valve, causing a severe um, mitral regurgitation. And this patient eventually had a perforation here, so was sent to the OR. And here, this patient, um, part of the posterior uh, device was dislodged, but it was it, it it is still staying in place. So we are following this patient up in the clinic. This is a VSD device. You can see that there's no residual shunt. This is not touching the aortic valve, and this small AR was there before the device. Uh, coronary fistula well-placed device, and you can follow up the regression of the dead space and with the echo. So uh, post-op follow-up patients, uh, usually if the surgeons did a good job, the uh, findings would be similar to the uh, normal findings of an echo. So this is a pre-op TOF. A large VSD with conal septal deviation, RVRT obstruction, severe PS, and a small PDA here. This is the post-op finding of this patient. Uh, no residual shunt and a large um, RV outflow tract. This is a TGA patient with a VSD. Uh, after switch operation, good function of the neoaorta and no RVRT obstruction. So um, ECHO can be used in the cath lab for um, uh, assessing the intervention. There, uh, we usually use TTE or TEE and intracardiac echo. They have their advantages and disadvantages. So TTE, uh, TTE can be used for pericardiosynthesis to mark where you will puncture the needle and if the wire is in place. Uh, TE can be assisted uh, when closing the ASD or uh, VSD device. It's there to measure the size, uh, balloon occlusive diameter, and see if there's any residual shunts. And sometimes you can um, see the embolization. Intracardiac echo, uh, you can measure the ASD size, and it can be used uh, when you are performing a, a septal puncture. It, uh, the balloon occlusive diameter, and it can be um, used to assist the device placement. And in an OR, you can use the TEE to see uh, the post-op findings. There are um, many views that you can use to see all the, uh, all the parts of the heart. And this is a VSD patient with um, a patch right here, no AR and no residual shunt, and a nice um, patch here and no RVOT obstruction. And in an AVSD patient, good uh, patch placement, tiny TR and a mild MR. You can evaluate TOF patient uh, with a good patch and no um, RVOT obstruction and good branching. And then in a TGA patient who underwent um, switch operation, good function of the neoaorta, mild AR, and um, good function of the pulmonary artery and good branching of the pulmonary arteries. So the functions, and a long time ago they did M mode, but now we have all these um, different um, modalities to do the uh, function, but uh, I will. I think this is beyond the scope of this talk, so um, I will finish up. So, um, little advice: imaging planes may be unique to each individual patient. Uh, it is best to do the 2D imaging before doing the spectral or color flow Dopplers. Uh, 
And ergonomics is always important, so make yourself comfortable even in the cath lab. And there's a vast spectrum of abnormalities in patients with uh, CHD, and there are usually several appropriate options for repair. The echocardiographer must have an excellent understanding of the surgical and interventional repair to interpret the echo findings. <laughs>